jumping all over the state in this, so um, I wanted to kind of give people a context as to where we're talking about. <clears throat> the topic of this paper is uh, Henry P. Karstens. Uh, he was the first superintendent of Mount McKinley, but he was a lot of other things as well. Um, one of the places I'm going to be mentioning is um, Eagle, which is right over in here, Eagle, Alaska. Uh, and the 70 mile area um, is down just south of Eagle, I believe. Uh, and then Valdez, uh, just to give you a little bit of context um, for the first part of this. So Henry Peter Carstens was the first superintendent of Mount McKinley. Um, so who was Harry? Well, they called him Harry, that was his nickname. Uh, he was a miner, he was a mail carrier, he was a guy, a packer. Uh, I have on my notes, a businessman, uh, <clears throat> a mountaineer, and the first uh, superintendent of Mount McKinley National Park. Harry was born in Chicago uh, and came north during the gold rush. Uh, when he first got up here, he was in, in the during Klondike gold rush, I'm sorry. Uh, he was a miner in the, uh, to, in the Klondike um, and became a mail carrier uh, at one point. But he left the, uh, the Klondike and went over to um, the 70 mile mining district uh, where the young and enthusiastic, tough and tenacious Harry acquired the nickname of the 70 mile kid. Uh, this name, nickname stayed with him the rest of his life. Um, Kind of by a fluke, he had volunteered to um, carry the mail from Eagle, Alaska to Valdez uh, by dog sled. And for the next few years, he ended up carrying the mail um, uh, uh, from, Eagle, uh, from Eagle down to Valdez, and then he had a route from um, uh, Eagle over to uh, Tanama, and he pioneered that route. Uh, it was 250 miles long. Uh, and that he carried the mail for almost two years. Uh, but in 1903, he carried the first mail into Fairbanks, uh, just as Fairbanks was beginning to uh, become a, a little community. In 1901, uh, he was into some other endeavors, such as guiding. Uh, Lieutenant Billy Mitchell and his troops um, were given the task of stringing the uh, Washington, Alaska Military Cable and Telegraph Service, what we know as WOMCATS, um, from Eagle down to uh, Valdez. This was a 420 mile line uh, and it took over a year, year to complete and <clears throat> uh, Harry was the, the guy for uh, Billy Mitchell and his troops doing that work. Harry the Packer. In uh, 1906, when hunt, uh, hunter naturalist Charles Sheldon uh, came to study the doll sheep in the Alaska range, he hired Jack Hayden and Harry Carstens as packers for the adventure. And what an adventure it was. In those days, you came to get into a lat or get into this area. Um, you come out of Fairbanks and enter the park area from the north. It, at that time, it was not a park, of course. But you come in on the rivers. Um, they left, the, they left Fairbanks on a steamer going down the Tanama River to the Cantitiona River uh, to the village of Roosevelt and then overland to the town of Eureka in the Cantitiona Mining District, which is probably right up in right there. Uh, they spent six weeks in the Toklat River area. Um, this was some of their um, adventures that they, they were having. They had to ford a stream. Horses got mired down in, in bogs. Oops, wrong one. I'm taking lessons from Mike here. <laughs> and every night they would let, let the horses uh, loose, and every morning Harry would climb up in a tree and try and find the horses to round them back up. Um, so they spent six weeks in the Topat area and then and collected all kinds of, of uh, specimens. Uh, Sheldon decided to come back to continue his study over the winter of 1907-08 uh, and asked Harry to accompany him. Uh, during this time, they built this cabin on the Toklat River, um, and there's a slide of them um, hauling freight uh, back out in 1908. Harry spent the next few years, um, I'll have to back up here a minute. Uh, after uh, Sheldon left uh, the area, uh, Harry spent the next few years in Fairbanks, and Charles Sheldon, along with others, 
uh, worked very hard uh, lobbying Congress uh, to make this area a national park. In the meantime, Harry, back in Fairbanks, went into business, uh, established the Whitley Karstens brokerage firm. They bought mining interests and real estate. Uh, Harry had a reputation for picking good investments, so the company was uh, pretty successful. Now, Harry the Mountaineer. In the early part of the, of the century, numerous attempts had been made to conquer uh, Mount McKinley, Dr. Cook, among others. In 1913, Harry, Archdeacon Hudson Stuck, Walter Harper, and Robert Tatum decided that they too would make an attempt to climb the mountain. The Karsten Stuck expedition made the first successful summit of Mount McKinley's highest peak. Harry described this as the ultimate climax of my trips around the territory. An earthquake in 1912 had destroyed one of the main climbing routes, and this expedition had to cut steps into a ridge during their climb as they, made the, uh, as they headed up to the top. Today, this ridge is known as Karsten's Ridge. So after the climb, Harry again um, went back to Fairbanks. Um, this time, he started running a, a business um, there was a stage line, it was called the Burgess Karstens Valdez Stage Line. They ran the stage line between Fairbanks and Valdez from about 1915 to 1920. Finally, in 1917, Congress <coughs> established Mount McKinley National Park. In 1921, Harry became the first superintendent with Sheldon's backing. Harry was the first, Harry was the right man for the job. He was well known in Alaska as a tough, experienced outdoorsman, uh, and he was a man of conviction who could get the job done. When Harry first started uh, the park, the original, oops, Mike. <laughs> uh, the original park was just this area here. These other areas um, tacked on there represent the additions uh, in later years. In 19, uh, 22, they made this extension, um, which brought the park quite a bit further to the east. Um, let's see where I... Okay, um, what I'm going to talk about here is when Harry first came to the park, and I guess you can't hear me when I get up there. Um, let's see what I'm pointing at here. Okay, right here is McKinley, uh, what I'm going to refer to as McKinley Park Station. And that is the area, basically, um, Hines and Riley Creek, just down where Riley Creek Campground is now, just, you know, to the, just out the front door from here, uh, and down on the south, south of the railroad. There's a little community called McKinley Park Station. Um, there was a, a, an engineering camp down there for the railroad construction. There was a uh, Maurice Marino ran a roadhouse. Um, um, Duke Stubbs had a fox farm. And it was into this area that Harry came to build the first um, park headquarters. So with a shoestring shoe budget, Harry set out to build park headquarters on the banks of Riley Creek. Initially consisting of an office, a residence for himself, his wife, and his son, um, Harry had worked hard to improve relations between the park service and the local residents in McKinley Park Station. Uh, helping to improve that relationship, Harry and a couple of his rangers built a community school. Um, what I'm, I think I want to leave it. Oh, another, okay, another thing I'm going to talk about that I want to show you is, um, is during this period we needed to access into the park and, you know, so they started, they began road building. Uh, the railroad wasn't complete at this time, not until 22. Um, and Harry started the first park concession, which I'm going to talk about also, and that was at Savage River Camp. So it's right there uh, on that dot. Um, so access into the park, um, Harry was, oh, here's the first park headquarters. Forgot my slides here. This is down on the banks of Riley Creek. That's Harry in front of the office. And Rangers and I are in Billings. And this is Harry uh, going up Rock Creek in a, in a wagon. So access into the park. Harry was all about access into the park and spent a great deal of time choosing the route for the road. 
An agreement between the Alaska Road Commission and the NPS allowed road, beginning, uh, road building to begin. Here they are uh, hauling freight in 1925. Although it would not be complete until 1938, long after Henry, Henry, Harry's uh, tenure, uh, the building began under Harry. Doing some road grading. And that's the last Road Commission warehouse in, uh, down by the railroad depot. Uh, the scenic route, route that we travel on today is much the same as Harry had envisioned it. And as I mentioned, the, this is the first uh, railroad depot, a uh, boxcar. Uh, the railroad opened, you know, people could get to the park uh, by 1922 uh, on the railroad. Henry also started the first park kennels. Um, he established the first dog team and the kennels here at the park. The first dog team was made up of seven male dogs from the same litter. Uh, the dog teams and kennel remain a tradition in this park that continues today. Harry also started the first park concession. Uh, with railroad complete, road building underway, Harry's attention turned toward visitor accommodations and experience. First concession permit went to Dan Kennedy uh, with the Mount McKinley Tourist and Transportation Company. Kennedy's headquarters was in the uh, McKinley Park Station area, as you can see here, and he established Savage River Camp uh, 50 miles into the road, up the road, um, accessed first by horseback, and, and I didn't need to put that in there again, and later by touring cars. So this is the uh, dining hall and social hall for, for Savage River Camp. You can see the tent cabins around. Another shot with some tourists. That could likely be Harry right there. Pack saddle trips out of Savage Camp, up the river, and other directions. It's a picture of the camp of the horse corral. So you can see it was actually quite big. It accommodated quite a few uh, few visitors. And here are touring cars lining up, getting ready to head to the train depot. And one of the later um, Managers of the camp, Bobby Sheldon, seen here. Bobby Sheldon, uh, senior with Harry. Uh, Harry. Harry frequently went out to the uh, to Savage Camp to delight, and delighted visitors with his tales of adventure and advocating for park protection. With the uh, first concession contract in place uh, and park visitation on the rise, Harry felt the need to. Um, build a new park headquarters. He thought he needed to move the headquarters out of uh, Riley Creek and up along the park road. There are several other reasons for this move, uh, not just putting the headquarters on the, on the road, but um, uh, in Riley Creek, in the creek bottoms, it gets very, very cold in the winter. Um, and the, they had a lot of problems with uh, Riley Creek and Hines Creek flooding in, during spring breakup. So here we are at the beginnings of the um, new park headquarters in 1925. And you should note this little build, this little thing here, and that's a weather station. And the park has, uh, ever since like that 19, the move in 1925, has kept uh, weather records. So there's a superintendent's office. Um, if you've ever been out to Ileson, where everyone is always putting the antlers on their head while well, they were still they were doing it back then as well. <laughs> uh, this is the, the barn, which is uh, we're using it for office space today. It's a machine shop that was um, constructed during that time period. Um, in 1928, Harry left the NPS uh, to go into business in Fairbanks. His accomplishments were, were many and included several firsts. First mail delivery to Fairbanks, the first summit of Mount McKinley, um, and as park superintendent, he established the first dog kennels, which are today one of the biggest visitor attractions in the park. He established the first park concession to provide visitor services. Uh, and for the most part, the scenic route of the park road, which we all still enjoy, is the route chosen by Harry. 
Uh, he established the new, the new park headquarters, what, where it is today, uh, which is now a historic district where many of us still work and, and live. Charles Sheldon, um, well, back up here, uh, in 1958, mm -hmm. these two plaques commemorating uh, Sheldon and Karstens were uh, put up out of Toe Platte, um, the area where Charles and Harry had uh, spent so much time together doing some work. Um, This is Harry and Stephen Mather at the Sheldon Cabin in 1926. Charles Sheldon is considered the father of this park. Harry Carstens was certainly the pioneering superintendent who got this park up and running for the enjoyment uh, of all. And that's what I've got. Um, I do want to mention one other thing. Um, in the audience tonight, we have the grandson of Harry Carstens, uh, Gene Carstens, would you stand up? And it's just great grandson. And his great grandson, uh, Kenneth Carstens. And another great grandson, Raymond Schuneman. These guys come to the park every year or so and drag Jane and I all over down in the old headquarters area, out the Toe Platte River, all over the place. And we've been looking at wonderful, wonderful historic photographs that they have scanned. And we've been sitting in the conference room looking at these all week. And they've been down in the archives. They've been doing a lot of research. So we enjoy having them around. Hmm. Thanks.